All right. I think, Mr. Chairman, we're ready to roll. We are. David? Uh, thank you. Um, so on your desk is a single piece of paper, landscape, that is the hold items on the budget. I think it probably makes sense to start there. Um, I'll go through them and you tell me if you've made progress. Uh, amendment number five was the West North Avenue cut where the house had cut two and a half million. I'm going to continue to hold that. Okay. Um, amendment 14, the house had struck Senate intent language related to the Community Health Resources Commission and the procurement of a referral and data reporting platform. I think we're okay to take the Senate position. Okay. Amendment 15, Community Health Resources Commission is the 100 million cut to the consortium. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to hold this. Um, Amendment 22, all right, this one should be easy. So the, um, the House had struck language restricting a report. And on the very first page of the pink packet is the narrative that we understood the subcommittee chairs had agreed to um, as a replacement for the language. That's this right. was actually language in the House report, I believe. So. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, amendment 30 is the um, preservation of cultural arts, the fiscal 25 funding, where there's a concern about whether there's actually 900,000 available to cover the things that have been fenced. I think we're close here, but we're just going to hold it for a beat and we'll probably be there next time. Uh, amendment 34, 35, and 36 relate to your ads. Um, I think there's still conversations going on about ads, so we were going to hold all of that until you're ready to complete the package. We're, I think we're ready on those items. I think we're okay on 34, all the 35, 36, but I know you did want to add do some ads later. So can we adopt these, but do the ads later, or do you have to hold them? Well, these will be a, these will all be conference committee amendments because whatever new ads you're doing will get added in here. So uh, they're just here as a reminder that we need to do okay. a sort of That's final fine. ads yeah. action. So I think we're okay with house position. We are. Yeah, yeah. But pursuant to the ads that they Right, have. right. Everything that you've already done would stay, and then it will be whatever changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if in the pink packet, you go to the second page, um, the Department of Budget and Management informed us today that Supplemental Budget 2 had an error that included an extra 808000 for the governor's office that was not needed. So this is a cut that you could take. Sounds good. Yep. Okay. Uh, page 3 also relates to Supplemental Budget Number 2. Um, the Supplemental includes $2.5 million dollars um, for private schools, for nurses and security. It's the same amount of money as was provided last year. This language on page three is the exact same language you added last year, which just says you can't participate unless you participated in the boost program in fiscal 24. I think that's good. Yep. <clears throat> All right. And then on pages four and five, there's some um, new language related to Department of Environment and Building Energy Performance Standards requests some reporting. I think that was fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, with those hold items that we talked about, you are, that's all you have to do on the operating budget. Um, and then Tanya will walk you through the budget reconciliation of well, financing. We, can we just pause for two minutes so we can switch out conferees? Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. David, while we switch over, can we go back to an item really quick that on um, number 30? Number 30. I think we're okay to House and Senate just each split 600, which is, I think, the available money on this. Sure. Yep, that's perfect. Yep. Okay. We'll give you the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got it.
Okay, we're back for the Burfa. Yep, you should have a landscape document on your desk that's a couple of pages, and Tanya's going to walk you through it. Um, I'm actually going to start with the very last item, uh, 410 uh, appropriation additional. Um, so this was um, a provision that was adopted in lieu of the language related to the Community Health Resources Commission, the closed loop referral. Based on the action you took on the operating budget, you would want to uh, reject uh, this. Yeah, I have sent it. And we may have to work through that a little bit. The, I think that's fine, actually. That, that means you go with the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's yeah, fine. Consistent so, with yeah, what you did yeah. in the budget itself. Yeah. You want okay. To that's okay. Fine. Okay, if you're good with that. Yep. Okay. okay. Um, going back to the beginning of the document then. Item number two, the first item, um, this provision eliminates the mandate for the Consumer Protection Division and the OAG um, and authorizes special funds. The Senate adopted this provision for fiscal 2025 only. Um, the House um, adopted the provision as it was introduced. Yeah, we're, we're gonna hold this. Um, item four um, alters the allowable uses of the blueprint funds um, through the coordinated community supports um, to include school-based um, behavioral health services. The Senate rejected, the um, House adopted the provision as introduced. I think this one's also on hold. Item five uh, removes the uh, prohibition on implementing a freeze in the child care scholarship program. The Senate modified to require a 60 day notice before implementing the enrollment freeze. The uh, House uh, rejected the modification and the original provision and um, also prohibited increasing co-pays above the levels in place on January 1, 2024. So uh, we're gonna take the uh, House position on this. Um, item 23 um, advance, advances the reduction in the highway user revenue distribution to jurisdictions from fiscal 2028 to 2026. The Senate adopted, the House struck the provision. And, you know, Mr. Chair, this is a, a point of sort of conflict here, um, something that was we've reiterated very important to the House, but also tied up in the revenues. I do think it's incumbent for this conference committee to maybe, maybe just have some discussion on this item. Um, I know Delegate Edelson, who represents Baltimore, did want to be heard. So with your permission, we'll just call on Delegate Edelson. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you all. Um, I did want to speak for a brief moment on the importance of how we use the revenue, which we all know is the state aid that we provide to local jurisdictions for the maintenance of, of our roads. The biggest recipient of that being Baltimore City. And that is because Baltimore City um, has the task, the requirement of maintaining all of the roads and highways within the city limit. If we take this reduction, the reduction to Baltimore City alone would be $122 million. Uh, since 2009, uh, the reduction in highway user revenue to Baltimore City has been over a billion dollars, which has essentially resulted in Baltimore City DOT, the Department of Transportation, not having a capital budget. And if you drive on the roads in Baltimore City, you will see this lack of investment reflected. It also impacts MTA, the Maryland Transit Administration, because it's our bus fleet that drives on these roads and negatively impacts our ability to keep that fleet in a state of good repair. Uh, and I would also just note that we cannot ignore the state of the Hanover Street Bridge, which is in my district in Baltimore City, which is almost certainly gonna get a significant amount of new traffic since last week's tragedy um, on the Hanover Street Bridge and many other neighborhoods throughout the city, and also because it connects the neighborhoods of Cherry Hill, Brooklyn, and Curtis Bay to the rest of the city. So if we are going to keep our commitment to Marylanders that we're going to lift everybody up, these neighborhoods are deserving of our support and our help. And I would note that these projects take time. It requires multiple years of planning, hiring, procurement, design, engineering, and construction to make it happen. That's why the money is needed now and we need the predictability of knowing that the money will be there for years to come. Finally, Mr. Chair, I would just note, if we don't fix our roads and highways and maintain MTA's fleet in the state of good repair, there is no future in which the red line is a real possibility for Baltimore and the state of Maryland. And a thriving Baltimore is a thriving Maryland. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Yeah, and I think our Senate, you know, agrees uh, with highway users. It's just about how we get there. So I know that this is going to be a conversation for revenues uh, when we get there. So I think maybe we need to hold this for now until we get to our revenue discussion. Uh, that that's fine. I and I appreciate the fact that you you recognize that we do have the same uh, commitment uh, to making this happen. Let me just say, I'm, are the rest of them in are on revenues? We have the stickers like, next. Uh, and the rest of the document is transportation and mainly yeah, the revenue. Let's let's hold the sticker if we could. We're going to hold stickers, and then we might as well just start talking about the revenues. Sure. Um, We're going to hold sixty-two, okay, or eight PP twenty-four, item twenty-four. Hmm. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, last year we made a decision to put together a commission to study transportation <laughs> needs <laughs> and funding. And that commission was a two-year commission. It uh, went through its first year. There were a few recommendations. And um, we, uh, as a group, looked upon those recommendations, and one of which we're going to move forward with. The other, um, because of the nature of the, uh, the recommendation as it relates to tolls um, and what has happened uh, tragically in Baltimore uh, with the key bridge, um, we thought it best to put that one to the side. But the bottom line uh, in my mind has been all along, uh, how are we going to solve these big problems? And they are significant problems um, and uh, significant challenges and opportunities, hopefully, um, that we'll see it as that way. Um, having going through that Going through that process um, that will occur, I hope, uh, in the next year, we will get an even uh, closer idea of what it is that we really need to raise and also uh, why we need to raise it and, and looking at every program area all across the state to make sure that everyone uh, receives uh, the high quality transportation network that we all want. We need to move people and we need to move commerce. And um, it's, I think, critically important that we make a very big decision about how we're going to do that. Um, I think this year is a good discussion. I believe uh, very much uh, in good faith and, and appreciate the House and the efforts that they've put forward. Um, however, uh, as we go through here, there are a few things that uh, we are willing, from the Senate standpoint, um, to, to talk about, uh, to put out initially that we're willing um, to put forward. Uh, but we're hopeful that we have that year to consider uh, the bigger picture, all components, everything from the port to aviation to all the roads and transit, and we'll come up with um, a really uh, great solution over the course of time. And uh, that's what uh, uh, I believe the Senate is looking for. I know uh, the House is also looking for a great solution too. And uh, uh, we're gonna keep talking uh, as the days move forward. So with that revenues you wanna keep holding? Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to hold. I'm happy to mention the ones that um, uh, we are interested in moving on. Um, uh, we have already passed uh, electric vehicles surcharge bill in the Senate, and I know you obviously have it in the House in this in this perp book. Um, we'd be willing to accept uh, your transportation network company impact fee. We also have been working on the highway uh, work zone fines, uh, which of course came out of the administration, but I think. Both sides have been working on that. Um, with regard to the uh, increase in vehicle registration, you have a, a line item here that generates about $200 million. We'd be in a position that we'd be willing to raise at $140 million. Uh, and then on the on a document fee increase, um, uh, which has to do with car purchases, um, we would also be willing um, to, uh, to move on that. Uh, in particular, on the registration also, we know that you've come up with a, uh, a process of, of looking at this uh, where you've got um, 
a number of um, levels based on the weight of vehicles. Um, uh, and we appreciate that. We think that makes sense. Um, so in, in doing what we would do on that uh, vehicle registration, we would uh, we'd be willing to uh, move forward with something like that. So <clears throat> we're gonna need further discussion on all of these clearly. Um, I think David, this brings us to number 95, which is probably a good segue <clears throat> because nine, number 95 illustrates the sort of intent language of what would be restored if you did the house plan. And I'm really happy to hear the Senate uh, agree that we do have to solve the problem. And maybe, and, and I'm hearing the Senate that, that we need to you know, do it next year and maybe even a bigger package than this next year. Um, I guess the House's position would be we don't wait, need to wait until next year. We know the solutions and we know the problem now. And when you're in a hole, you don't keep digging. And the House believes that we should solve these problems right now as we sit here today. Um, we're appreciative of putting, you know, a modicum of small amount, $250 million on the table, but it just doesn't get us to what we need to do in number 95. And um, I know that the, we have a chair of our transportation committee here that really did want to walk through sort of that intent language and what was cut from the CTP. So everyone has a full understanding of what our package restores and what this sort of smaller, um, really small package would and would not. So with your permission, uh, Chair Corman. Hey, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I'm thrilled to say that everyone here apparently knows we have a transportation challenge. We just heard it articulated quite well from Chair Grizzoni, which I appreciate. Uh, I just want to make sure everyone understands, though, that the, the budget for FY25 you all are working on has cuts in it for the Department of Transportation. Not everything was solved by $150 million in rainy day funds. And that includes basically freezing the state highway construction program, about 14 projects in Allegheny County, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore, Carroll, Charles, Frederick, Garrett, Harford, Howard, Montgomery, Prince George's, St. Mary's, and Washington counties. All of those projects are currently on, uh, on freeze. And frankly, the longer they're on freeze, all the products behind them are also on freeze. So the next project in Howard County, the next project in Washington County, the next project in Prince George's County also can't start moving through uh, the pipeline as long as that is frozen. Commuter bus is cut, aviation grant is cut, grants are cut, and more. And we know there's an underinvestment in both the minor projects program and the state of good repair, which I think my colleague on the Appropriations Committee will talk more about. Now, it is true that the rainy day fund staves off the most massive cuts one time, but I would just say, I think the house view is, we don't want the fiscal year 25 cuts. We don't want the underinvestment in state of good repair. And we don't wanna be sitting here next year wondering why we didn't act sooner uh, when we can address these now. The language in the house BRFA, which goes further obviously than uh, what the Senate's willing to go along with so far, um, raises revenue to do the things that the bill says it would do. We put the language very clearly uh, in the back. So first of all, it restores the highway user revenue that Delegate Edelson spoke about, which is aid to our counties and municipalities for uh, road assistance. Uh, it restores on an ongoing basis the locally operated transit systems, which is you know aid to our local counties for transit service. It helps Maryland Transit Administration operating, which to be clear is the bus and train service primarily in the city of Baltimore, as well as the Mark Rail system that serves other parts of the states. Uh, it helps with that state of good repair at the Maryland Transit Administration, which the General Assembly has in lockstep tried to get ahead of over the past few years by passing the Transit Safety and Investment Act. Uh, it helps with State Highway Administration system preservation, also known as state of good repair. Uh, it uh, re unfreezes the construction program that I was talking about a moment ago and allows us to make the next down payment on the red line and other major transportation projects. And it does it in a targeted way, but it does it now. <laughs> we don't need uh, to wait. We have solutions on the table here. I serve on the train commission as Chair Gazzoni does, and uh, along with Vice Chair Chang and uh, Delegate Feldmark and Senator Hershey and uh, now Chair Beidle in the Senate. Uh, we've gone through a year of that process, and that is in part is what's led to the ideas that are... Um, before us here, but I do want to turn to Chair Watson to talk more about the state of good repair uh, underfunding because I think it's it's pretty important, especially now. Chair Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in addition to Chair Corman's um, explanation of why we feel we need to raise this revenue now, it's, it's not just the major construction programs that he spoke about, but it's also what we call the minor program in the State Highway Administration that includes things like um, safety, congestion relief, 
and highway and bridges. It includes bridge replacement and rehabilitation, drainage improvements, intersection capacity, resurfacing and rehabilitation, traffic management, noise barriers. $90 million more is needed in fiscal 25 than we are providing. And those are very important projects to everyone's safety and quality of life. In addition to the minor construction, we have state of good repair, which Chair Corman mentioned. That's a $163 million cut. And what that means is state of good repair is defined as basically every asset is performing at the level it should. And we have 17,000 state highway lane miles and more than 5,000 bridges. In my subcommittee, one of the uh, questions, a follow-up after one of our hearings to MDOT, we asked uh, we asked a question and they provided the answer to us. And in that answer, it reads, the subcommittee would like to see a list of bridges that are a priority for funding that are not currently being funded in the budget. And the response from MDOT was the American Legion Bridge remains the number one priority for the administration. But alongside that critical me mega project, we also have uh, large bridge projects that would be priorities due to condition and traffic safe safety and other factors. And they include the Cumberland Viaduct, the Thomas Johnson Bridge, US 522 over the Potomac Crossing, the Ocean City US 50 drawbridge and the Ocean City Maryland 90 bridge. And I won't go on and on, but I will just show you that as a sample, they sent a whole two pages of other bridge projects that need to be funded that aren't being funded. And so we know that these things need to be funded now and that waiting a year would really set us back in terms of digging that hole deeper, but also in increasing the cost of some of these state of good repair improvements. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I think it, it comes down to not uh, whether these things need to be solved. I think we're in concert there. It's sort of when, and from the house's perspective, um, we've heard that there are problems that are facing us right now. And so we believe we should solve these problems right now. We should we should address them head on. And we haven't even discussed yet, Mr. Chairman, the education portion of our revenue package. I know we have the chair of the Ways and Means Committee who has worked so hard on the, the blueprint. And I would be remiss if we didn't give her an opportunity to talk about, a little bit. How about we stick with transportation before we move on? Was that okay? That's fine. If you want, Mr. Chairman, you have something else to say about transportation. Oh, I do. Yep. Yeah, um, several things. One, just so everyone is clear, with regard to highway user, uh, we are funding it at the level uh, that we had put in legislation, uh, I guess it was a year or two year ago. Um, so we are at that level. We're, this is not a cut to highway user this year. Um, we're talking about out years. And I think uh, I know that the Senate is very committed um, to working on that issue as we move forward. <clears throat> I'd also mentioned that although 250 isn't the number that you were hoping to raise in revenues uh, from transportation, $250 million can be used for many of those things that were listed off by uh, your committee members. And although that would not cover every single thing, it would cover many of them and would be able to move forward um, on a number of projects uh, that were listed uh, by your members. And I guess the bottom line, too, is that what we're talking about here is going to the, the residents of Maryland and saying, what are you willing to pay to accomplish these things? How much are you willing to dig into your pocket are you willing to pay additional taxes every time you buy a new car? Are you willing to pay more because you won't get a trade-in allowance when you buy that new car? And, and I mentioned the cars in particular. We've got a number of proposals that are dealing with transportation and cars, which make logical sense. But let's also remember, with the port where it is uh, in the situation that it is uh, today, and the fact that it's the lifeblood of, of, of the port is the, is, is the automobile business that comes in and out. To me, it seems like the wrong time to be considering going for that even extra level of taxes and asking uh, the residents of Maryland to raise on that cause when 
I know that when the uncertainty over this coming year, as we see what's happening and and look, I, I'm thrilled that the president of the United States has indicated that they, he's going to pay for this bridge. But, you know, that money still has to come through Congress. And we've got to know we, there's so much uncertainty ahead of us. We need to be carefully looking at all of these things before we go to the residents of Maryland and ask them to pay any more than I think um, the proposal that we're willing to live with. So, yeah, and I think the uncertainty is all the more reason to do something now to solve these problems now. And, and you know, the chair brings up a, a good point that, you know, what are the residents of Maryland willing to sustain? But also at the same time, the Senate is telling us that we're going to do these things next year, just going to have to do them next year. They're the same package. They're the same things that will be on the table next year. So uh, we should address them now. But the House is not wedded to any one sort of item in its in its proposals. The governor's asked us to compromise. The governor has said the House and Senate should sit down and compromise. But let, let's be clear, compromise doesn't mean doing nothing. And Mr. Chairman, thank you, because your proposal is not nothing. But it also doesn't mean doing so little that we're not actually solving any of the problems. So we're not wedded to any particular sort of item in our list. And we're not afraid to go off list for new or other items. What we do need, though, is we need a compromise that actually solves a problem. And so I think that is what the, the citizens of Maryland expect from us. I think we will be lauded when they see that their roads and bridges are in good repair and that there's less uncertainty for an entire year. The fact that we've had to use general fund dollars to pay for these transportation programs is just not sustainable. And so it sounds like we're, uh, we are still on hold with our transportation revenues. I'm understanding your position, I think, sort of understanding ours at this juncture. I do think we'd be remiss if not if we don't talk a little bit about education, would that be sure. an appropriate time? Because sure. the House package was $1.2 billion, and, and before us, we have an offer of $250 million. Um, again, that, that doesn't quite reach our expectations of compromise, and particularly because none of that um, is for education at all. We have the chair of our education committee here, um, Chair Atterbury. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just to be brief, um, you know, I'm just disappointed that we haven't been able to talk about education at all, because one thing that is un is not uncertain is that we have um, a lot of children, our most valuable residents in the state of Maryland that we need to take care of. Um, and I know there's a former teacher and principal on a uh, budget and tax that would agree with me. And we made a commitment, this body made a commitment in 2020 uh, to, to, to do the blueprint and follow through with it. And if we're not going to follow through with it, we're not going to fund it. If we're not going to make sure our three and four year olds get off on the best start that they can toward a world class education, then quite frankly, I'm not sure uh, why we put the, that measure forward and why we voted for it. Um, you know, first there was COVID and we can't just keep kicking the can down the road, down the road and waiting for the success of the next generation of kids. Um, we've got to start now. And so part of the house's package did include iGaming that would directly be tied to the blueprint, be directly tied to education and also combined reporting. And so those were our um, solutions. And so it would it would be nice to get a response um, or, or ha start having a conversation um, about the blueprint, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we do need to hold the intent language for now, though. Yeah. Yep. So we'll hold that. Any other items, David? The one other topic you haven't talked about is the, the trauma, uh, funding for trauma, the surcharge and the vehicle registrations. I think there's any argument or debate over whether we want to do trauma. The chairman's been a leader on that. Thank you. I know uh, Chair Shetty has worked all summer on that. I think we're just tweaking the numbers a little bit, but I think we should be there by our next meeting. That's, That's right. Yep. Okay. Just let us tweak the numbers a little, David, and we'll probably be right back to you. Stickers are on hold, right? Yeah, I think yes. you've covered everything you're going to be able to cover today. So I, I don't know if you have uh, time in mind or day in mind to get together again. Or sure, I think we should meet every day until this is resolved. I will just propose that we, we meet here every day at three o'clock and keep working through our differences. I think I'm going to need to get back to you on that. All right. Well, we'll be here. You know where we are. Right. You call me. I'll come right over 10 minutes. I'll be right in your office and ready to work out whatever we can work out. Appreciate your speed. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad knee, you know, <laughs> turn it 50 next year. <laughs> All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.